Hello and welcome to Frank's School. This is the 87th day of the sixth year of the first video and I'm going to call it Words Goes to Jail. Uh, words. I, or, or a little bit ago, maybe 10 videos ago, I, I said meet words and I explained that words is the new name for a, an experience exercise call it, that I call class vocabulary, or I have called that. Anyway, uh, I've taken it to jail, but only as, a, as, a, as an introduction, really. Uh, I've been to the jail, and, and I think I had said, yes, in that video I'd said that that was my intent. And I want to repeat a little bit on it, and I want to tell you what I did as well, a little bit. Now I have to be somewhat careful because, you know, I'm certainly not going to be using people's names, and there's so many rules what you can do and what you can't do. I gotta, I gotta get used to that. But anyway, when I got in there, I had two classes, first men and then uh, 45 minutes or so, and then down the hall and then just some women. There were 11 men there, and then the treatment specialist, a woman who was with me. I think you might say she's their, uh, I'm not sure, she's sort of like their normal teacher maybe, I don't know. And then uh, of the women, there were I think six, there might have been seven. And I'll maybe have more to say about that. I don't know. But I started with the men. And the f first thing I did after a little bit of introductions and stuff, I had them say in German, Aller Anfang ist schwer. Uh, aller, Aller, Anfang, Anfang, ist, ist, schwer. Now they had fun or both, both with that word schwer because that's, that's quite different. But uh, I was, I often think of that because it, it means... Uh, of all, beginning is heavy. <laughs> all beginnings are heavy, you might say, or every beginning is heavy. And I said, you know, that I, I we were beginning something and, and it was hard. Actually, it wasn't, <clears throat> it wasn't hard. I thought about that. The hard part was to get in there. It took me about two months, longer than it really should have, I think. But anyway, I. I had managed to get there, and once I was there, oh, then it was easy. Now, as I started, um, one of the first things as I was speaking to that group, I just automatically started to say yuns. I didn't even, hadn't even thought about it, because I wasn't speaking to you or you, I was speaking to yuns. And I, I find myself apologizing, I say, I'm sorry, that's, that's the way I uh, feel like speaking, and because that's non, or considered stub standard English here. And then, you know, one of them immediately knew what I was talking about. He says, that's fine, we like that. <laughs> you know, I was surprised at how quick he understood what had happened. But anyway, uh, so anyway, from that point on, well, that generated a little discussion about you guys, you all, you people, y'all, yuns. Uh, so I got into linguistics uh, almost immediately. Uh, but then that wasn't... Uh, I had a plan, and my plan really started like this. I, I gave them all a piece of paper because they, even their paper in there is limited. They have to buy their own paper. And I gave them all a piece of paper. That was allowed. Uh, I couldn't have just given them lots of paper. And I said, please don't do anything with it. And I said, now, take this paper, and I'd like you to fold it in half. And, uh, you know, not, not this way, but this way. And, and I was saying, but, th but wait, there is a right way to fold. And, and that right way to fold, you may or may not know this, you probably don't know it. You, you, of course you line the corners up, but then the thing that most people don't realize is then you crimp it in the middle if you're really folding correctly, and you go up and you go down, and then you've got a good fold. If you'd ever do that with a pile of papers, you'd see what I mean. If you just go from the bottom up, it, it slides askew. You know, and of course they thought, oh, that's kind of neat, you know, they folded it and, and it had their hands working right away. Uh, well, in a, you know, that was kind of part of my plan. I said, you know, I gave you one piece of paper, but now you've got four pages, really. One, two, three, four. You've got four pages if you can write small. And uh, so I, I had planned on doing that. Well, almost immediately with the men, I was aware of a powerful intellectual curiosity on the part of especially two out of the eleven. Uh, one of them had been a, well, two of the 11 were former students of mine back when <clears throat> they were in 7th or 8th grade, probably 8th grade. And uh, I remembered the one right away, the other it took a while because he changed a lot. But 
But and and one of the two demonstrated that powerful intellectual curiosity, and, and another man did as well. I mean, at one point, the guy just out of the blue started to ask about Julius Caesar burning the the uh, library at, at uh, Alexandria. <laughs> I thought, what? Where'd you come up with that? And he had a question about it. And I mean, you know, see, these are men now. These are not these are not uh, children. These are not students, and they. Some of them have pro probably are well educated. I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't even really know their names yet. But anyway, I, I wanted to point that out that it was powerful, especially on the men. Almost how, how to control us because they had questions and they wanted to know stuff. You know, they'd come because they it had been told that this was going to be a class called words, and I think it was also called uh, literacy or something like that. Literacy and words or something. You know that. The treatment specialist has to try to figure out what to do with this. It's kind of a wild card. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, I'll tell you about this Chaucer in a second. Uh, that came up, and I had not really intended that. Uh, 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 so, so anyway, part of my plan had been take a piece of paper, I said now, and, and I'd say, I'd like you to write on there, and they were all given pens, pens that had to be given back, but they actually were pens that were stiff enough. If they buy their own pen in there, it's, it's like the inside of a pen. It can't be a stiff thing, because, you know, and I understand why there's these rules. A, a sharpened pencil would be a very dangerous weapon. Uh, uh, could be, uh, and a pen could too. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, I said, now write up on there, would you? And I don't care how you spell it, any way you want. But and, but if you can, if you want to, if you can, I'd like you to write there. Once upon a time there was a, and I did the same thing. Once upon a time there was a, uh, and <clears throat> gave them a little bit of time, and they all did it except for one who is severely handicapped. He 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 was kind of a special case. He behaved himself just fine, but he, he really couldn't do that. And so they, they wrote something like, once upon a time there was a... And I, then I said, now here's what I wrote. And I this is what I had written. Once upon a time there was a... And I had planned to do that, to show that spelling... There's more than one way to spell. And, and, and I said, this is what we say once... We don't say Anke, and of course that's going to get their attention right away. And, and uh, I passed that around, what, what I had written, I passed that around for them to just take a look at it, and they knew what it said. Once, a, one, once upon a time there was a. And, you know, so, and then, see, almost immediately it, it get going, this intellectual curiosity, because the one guy said, well, isn't that sort of like a trap? And I thought, uh-oh. Does he think I'm trapping him, or, or I, I didn't know exactly what he meant by that? I lost my chalk. Um, and he tried to explain, and I think what he meant was what, what, what he wanted to know was why, why do we have to spell it like that? Isn't that like kind of a trap when when this is actually what we say? And I said, well, <laughs> do you want to know why? There's a reason. And yeah, yeah, they want to know why. And I said, well, it, it, it goes back to Ch uh, Chaucer, the whole thing with when the printing press was first invented and people started to actually print books and they, they had to standardize the spelling to make the, the uh, what do you call it, the typeface, uh, or well, to organize it to, yeah, how are they going to spell? And so what they t spelled is the way they did in the area around Caxton in England, where his printing press, that dialect. And at that time, People said was. They didn't say was. We say was now, but they said was at that time. And so 500 years later, or 600, whatever, we're still spelling it the way it was pronounced back then. Uh, I mean, and, and that they were ready to go. They wanted to know more about language right right away, but. But anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you every blow by blow of this whole account, not by any means. But anyway, uh, now I said, now I'd like you to go back here and strike this out, uh, and I'd like you to say, once upon a time there were two. And the only reason I did that was to teach them about striking out. 
uh, that, that, that does not make it messy. If you do it with a bunch of lines or blob it out, that makes it a mess. But if you just strike it out like that, that's fine. So you don't have to be afraid about making a mistake. Well, they knew all about that. <laughs> I said, you know, you can do that on a check. And it's still official as long as you, you know, initial it or something where you did it. And they knew because I think they'd been in, they'd run into court documents and official documents. And, and so uh, some of them actually knew about that already. Anyway, I said, all right, all right. I said, now pass it on to the person beside you. You know, someone kind of went wide-eyed at that, but, uh, but they looked and I said, now put something in there. And if you decide you want to be about one thing, well, then strike that out and say, was a. And it began. And for the next 15 minutes or so, it passed around about six times. And I said, just keep adding stuff to it. Uh, a, a mistake I made was I said, don't use anybody's name that, that, that we basically know, unless it's some real famous person in, in a movie or something like that, because we, we don't want to get involved in that. And I, I hadn't said that. and It was not a big issue, but it, it just made me struck them funny because there was a name in there that they knew and pass it on. Uh, all right, now, when I went over to the women, it was similar and yet so different. I came out struck by men and women are so different. That's the first time I ever had an all women's class. I think I one time had had an all boys class, all boys, eighth graders and low achievers. That was memorable. I mean, way back in my teaching career. But right back to back, I went from these 11 men to these six or seven women, and it was, I did the same thing, and it was so different. <laughs> uh, uh, later on, I'll, I'll tell, you, tell you more about that, but in both cases, just, just delightful, really. And, and I guess the final thing I want to say is the gratitude. Uh, I don't know, I don't know when a group has been so appreciative as you know, as 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 they were leaving, just just sort of thanking me, and uh, so I'm I'm really looking forward to going back next Tuesday. So anyway, uh, that's I hope that hasn't been too long, but I, I figured I'd share. I I plan to share more of this experience with you.